Greetings, I'm Barrent and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today we're going to be doing a playthrough of Robinson Crusoe Adventure on the Cursed Island. I just got my treasure chest box and I did an unboxing on my channel. If you missed that, please go ahead and check it out because some of the components we're using in this playthrough were from that exact thing. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to show you what scenario we're doing. We're also going to pick our characters and we're going to get everything set up so that we can begin our playthrough of Robinson Crusoe. For those that don't know, Robinson Crusoe is an adventure game for one to four players. And in this adventure game, you're given a scenario that you have to accomplish. It could be anywhere from running from an active volcano to just trying to get off the island. Or it could be that you've come to the island to try to take on some poachers. There's so many different adventures in this. There's even one starring King Kong that you can play in Robinson Crusoe Adventure on the Cursed Island. So this is a really cool game because every time you play it, it could be really different based on the scenario you choose. We're going to go ahead now and check out what scenario we're going to be playing while we go through Robinson Crusoe. The scenario we have decided to play is time travel. I haven't played this scenario yet. This is out of the treasure chest. So this is the new stuff that I just got. This is one of the promo things that they had made over the course of the game's lifetime. Now, I don't know much about the scenario. I haven't tried it myself. This is going to be a lot of fun to see how this all works together and how we do on surviving it. We could totally epically fail on this one. I don't know. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and give it a shot. Now, we're going to start by going ahead and reading the synopsis of this scenario. So this is scenario 11, and it says... You are working on a magnificent time travel machine at a secret research facility on the island. But while walking in the rain this morning, you were bitten by a venomous snake. Your only chance to survive is to create an antidote by gathering special ingredients, four very rare plants. So rare, in fact, that two of them have gone extinct. Your only option is to test run your time machine, enter the past, an era of dangerous beasts, and gather two extinct plants. However, it turns out that your machine is not fully functional yet, and you begin to stumble back and forth in time. The poison is spreading, and the clock is ticking! So, of course, the goal of the scenario is to find and gather the ingredients from the past and the present in order to create an antidote. To make each scenario seem unique, they all have special rules. This one says, during odd-numbered turns, you are in the past, while in even-numbered turns, you are in the present. When you reveal an island tile with a totem in the past, place the next odd-numbered token on it, one or three. When you reveal an island tile with a totem in the present, place the next even-numbered token on it, two and four. The island tiles with the number tokens are the locations of the ingredients for the antidote. Take the special gather an ingredient action on an island tile with a number token to gather the ingredient, once for each tile. Follow the normal rules for exploration and gather. On a success, place one marker on the island tile. You may only take this action on the island tiles with one and three in the past during odd number rounds and on island tiles two and four in the present. During even numbered rounds, once you have gathered all four ingredients, you need to take the special antidote action in the present and then survive until the end of the round. If you accomplish this, you win. Some discovery tokens and the book event cards provide different bonuses or penalties depending on if they're resolved in the past or present. During the night phase of every present round, the poison weakens you and each player gets negative one health. If you have successfully completed the antidote, you do not take any damage. So if we've been cured our poison within 10 rounds, I believe we're going to be losing the game. Also here it shows a little bit about the totems and what happens. Also we have the book one down here. We've, we resolve it in the past or, past or present. Something's going to happen. Of course, I'll refer to these as they happen during the game. And of course, I'll also show you the discovery tokens if we ever draw any. Here are the two extra actions they were talking about, the gather an ingredient action and the antidote action. So gather ingredient action, we're either going to have to place one or two characters here and then place a token on the island tile where you successfully perform the gather an ingredient action. You'll see how that works during the playthrough. Also over here, the antidote action, again, we're placing one or two people and it says you may take this action in the present during an even numbered round if you have successfully gathered all four ingredients and you survive until the end of the round. Then you win. 
The next thing we have to do is choose our characters. The first one we're going to choose is our gamer. He is out of the promo treasure chest that I just opened. We're going to go ahead and check him out. He's got his two character pogs right here. These are going to signify what actions you're doing. You're going to place them down. Now, of course, this character is dual sided. It's both male and female along with our tokens here. Now, the difference between that is specific is just gender. There is no other difference in the characters themselves. The female character has the exact same stat line and the exact same abilities that the male one does. So we're going to go ahead and be our gamer and he has this much health. Now as we tick down our health we're also going to lose morale. Keeping morale high is good because you're going to get determination tokens which are these and you're going to be able to spend them on your different powers down here and also some other things in the game. But if they start going below these arrows, you're going to have to start lowering the morale of the camp. And that's really bad. So we don't want that to happen. But we're going to go ahead and take a look now at the actual actions this character has. His first action says, Noob, I'm surprised how easy it is. I can discard three determination tokens to gain an extra character or an extra action token that I can use for certain specific actions. These are happen to be gathering and also crafting actions. Now, the way you're going to be gaining these morale or these determination tokens is based on your morale and also other things in the game. And you're going to spend these on your actions. For example, if I had three of these, I could go ahead and use this power. Also, there's an AI bonus. Boom! force field. I can again discard two of these to ignore one damage when I go hunting. He also has the cheat. I will do everything right. I will do the right thing once I've exhausted all alternatives. After resolving an adventure card effect, discard three determination tokens to not have to shuffle in the event deck and discard it. You'll see how that works during the playthrough. And the last one is Power Gamer. Oh, this is isn't a competitive game. That's my favorite quote. I love it. And it says, discard three of these to draw two mystery cards and resolve the first treasure and discard the other. Now, the mystery cards are these cards up here that we might be drawing during the playthrough as well. And he's going to be able to do this if he wants by discarding three of these determination tokens. So that's our gamer. Let's go ahead and check out the other guys. The next character is going to be our cook. And our cook, of course, has his two tokens up here. And notice his track is different from the gamers. Everybody's track is a little bit different. So he's going to affect the camp morale a lot faster than our gamer is. He only has three different arrow areas, and this one's got four. We don't want him to hit any of those. Now let's go ahead quickly and look at his abilities. The first one's called Grandma's Recipe. My grandma used to prepare unique soups. You're going to feel much better. Trust me. I can go ahead and, like the other one before, discard two of those determination tokens, and I'm able to heal two health by eating only one food. So a lot of his powers have to deal with, of course, food, finding food, and actually manipulating the weather. The next one is Scrounger. When I say I'll find it, I'll find it. You just have to know where to look. I can discard again two of those tokens to be able to reroll a gray die during your action, which are the dice you're going to roll when trying to gather different items on the board. The next one is Sown Soup. Lack of ingredients doesn't mean you can't cook. A good cook can make a soup out of nothing. And I'm a damn good cook, mates. I can discard three of these and I get one food just by putting a bunch of stones in water. Wow, that guy's pretty good. And the last one is hooch. I know it's cold, but don't worry. I prepared something for the bad weather. So again, I can discard some of my determination tokens to manipulate the weather. I can remove a cloud or I can change the snow into rain. And those are going to affect what happens to us at camp. Weather is not good in this game. You do not want to be caught in the weather. That's just rule number one. Another thing the cook has is every character other than the gamer has a specific card that they can make. And if they ever do make it, they're going to gain two determination plus be able to do what the effect of the card. So it's kind of good to make those because not only you get the determination, you actually get an item as well. Next we have our sailor. This character again is part of the promo pack that I got, that chest. So I'm really excited to try this character out as well. She starts with actually some of the least amount of health, but she only affects the morale track once. So it's a pretty cool character. Now of course, she again, just like everybody else, has a male and female side as well. We're going to go ahead and use the female side because I think it looks cooler. Let's go ahead and check out her abilities. The first one is Great Swimmer. We'll use the river. It will be faster. I can go ahead and discard two of those determination tokens to ignore a river tile in terms of calculating distance on an island. And again, you'll see how that works. Basically, the farther you go from camp, the harder it is to perform the action. And this one is going to allow us to, to actually ignore the river tile when actually trying to do stuff that's farther away from camp. 
The next one is treasure map. I've heard there are some treasures hidden here. I can discard three tokens to take a special gather action on a tile with a totem. If successful, I get to draw a mystery card and resolve either the trap or I can resolve the treasure once per tile. So that's not too bad. The last next one is cooking tricks. We'll use salt, lots of salt. I can discard two of my tokens to go ahead and turn a perishable food into a non-perishable food. So if we were having an abundance of food, she's going to be able to keep that food around. You cannot keep food from turn to turn unless, of course, it's non-perishable. If it's perishable, it's going to go away at the end of the turn. And the last one we have is tough. Don't worry. It's only a scratch. This one's actually pretty cool because I only have to discard one of these determination tokens and I get to re-roll any, any one of the the action dice during their turn and it's I can do any of the action dice we want. Each die signifies a different type of turn in the game. We have build, we have adventuring, and we also have gathering. So we can go ahead and choose which one of these to re-roll based on this. And of course you have to be doing the action in order to be rolling the dice anyway. Now the card she has is she can create a raft which is going to cost us two wood and I have to have the rope and you'll see kind of how that works during the playthrough and if I do I can choose to either have a character help get or I get a gather person or I get an exploring person and I then we can use one of these to help find things in the on the island now of course you have to be accompanying it you he can't go out on his own it doesn't work like that you have to be accompanying the character now of course we also are going to get those two determination if we actually do the action our last character is the Carpenter, and she, of course, has her tokens, and she starts here at this point. She's a pretty average character when it comes to the actual health of the character and what it does to our track. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and check out what she can do. Her first power is called Economical Construction. Scarce resources? What are you talking about? This is, the more, this is more than enough for me. I can discard two of those tokens to spend one fewer wood when doing any type of action. The next one is our craftsmanship action. It says, I've done it a thousand times. I could put it together blindfolded. I can go ahead and discard two to reroll the brown die during my action. And of course the brown die is our building die. The next one is a new idea. I think I just figured out a way to improve our camp. I can discard three of these tokens to go ahead and draw five innovations cards. Choose one, place it on the board, and then put the rest back. Our last one is Handyman. This is very basic construction. It won't even take a day to build. Discard three of these to go ahead and gain one of our little action guys that can help us for building. And our last thing we can do is we can build a snare with her, which allows us to gain an extra food on our resource tile that we're at for the camp. And she, of course, is going to gain two determination when she makes her snare. Next, we're going to go ahead and set up all the inventions. So these are the ones that we start with first. They're all going to have these little arrow symbols on here facing the name. These are the ones you automatically start with on the table ready to go. Now, you can't, you have to actually still craft them. And you can only craft the ones that you've found actually out in the wild. So if you have uncovered this tile, then you have the ability to try to create a shovel. Now, of course, we start at the beach. So we have the shovel that we can create, and we also have the glass. Now, this is from the promo kit, the uh, treasure chest that I I just opened. So this will be kind of cool. I haven't ever played with this before. This again can be made at the beach. So we're going to be able to find some glass and we can create it if we want to. Now on top of the ones that are out here, we get to also go ahead and grab five from this in invention deck that we have down here, this innovation deck. We're going to go ahead and give this a little truffle shuffle here. We're going to put out five of them and see what five we get. We have gotten lamp. So during the night phase, we can go ahead and gain health. We're going to put that out here. We have a shield, which is awesome. I'm going to go ahead and put that out here. We've also got a thermometer. We're going to go ahead and put that. We've got the hourglass, which is going to help our morale, which is fantastic. And we get a sling, which can help our go ahead and attack monsters and stuff. Now, remember that power the carpenter had where she could discard three to draw five invention cards? That's these. So you'd be able to put an extra one out here if she decided to do that. Now, on top of that, we also get to take our cards here, mix these up, and we get three of the, two of these from what, this is actually from stuff from our boat that crash landed and we have found on the beach. So we're going to go ahead and take two of these and see what we have found. We have found a pipe and tobacco. I can use this every time I do. I get two determination. And the other one is the Bible. So the Bible says here, when a player does this action, they get three determination and one health instead of just two. So that's going to be really cool. And of course, I can use this twice as well. And we'll see what that action is shortly. 
We do have our three decks here all set up along with the dice next to them. These you're going to be using as you go and do the different actions. We have a build action, a gather action, and an explore action. And based on how good of a job you do, whether you use one or two characters, you may be rolling dice that could affect how well you do and if you're drawing cards or not. It's really a cool system how this works. It's kind of a press your luck, but it's also like, it's really neat. I like how you do it. You either put one down and you roll some dice and hope that you don't get bad things, or you can put two down and automatically do the action. So it depends on how much action economy you want to do based, or do you want to deal with the luck of the dice. It's a really cool system. It's one of my favorite parts of the game. So the other decks of cards over here, we have our mystery deck, which are filled with like monsters and enemies. We also have some traps and we have some chests. They're all in here. We don't know what's where. Next, we have our beast deck. Now, this beast deck not only has the core deck in it, it also has the adventures and it also has the extra ones from the promo kit. So it has all the possible beast cards you could possibly have are in this deck. The next we have kind of a beach deck. This is a deck you can use. If you decide to craft or gather from this toad tile right here, you can choose instead to draw a card from here. So it's an interesting and an added thing to have in this game that also came with the promo pack. And we also have our tiles for our island. Now there's nothing new in there. They're all the same. There is nothing from the promo pack inside that. This game comes with three different cards that have a blue back to them. And you get to choose which one you want to use. I've gone ahead and chosen food crates. So this is a special event that only happens at the beginning of the game. And at this event up on the top, it says right here, you notice food crates scattered along the shore. And for this turn, or while this is in play, I could use one of my actions to go ahead and grab a perishable food. Or I could grab two actions and go ahead and grab a perishable and a non-perishable food. Then, of course, I'm going to be discarding this card. Now, of course, if we don't do anything about this card, as the game progresses, more event cards are going to come down and fill this area up. So another one will be placed here. And then again, if I place another one here without resolving any of these, this one's going to go away and we have to do what's on the bottom of the card. For this one, it says nothing happens, but for some other ones, something really bad could happen. So we'll have to see how that goes. This is probably a really good card to take care of because two food for two actions is a real good deal. There's only a few more things left to do. One of them, of course, is we have to put out all of our tokens. We have our perishable food, non-perishable food, we have our pelts or hides, and we also have our wood tokens here. Those are all, again, from the upgrade components that we got when we pre-ordered the chest. So those are really cool looking. I'm just really thrilled. These wood look so cool. This is pretty cool. All right. Then we also got the rest of the tokens back there that we may be using. And these, of course, are determination tokens. And these are tokens that may happen. Some of the cards may tell us to put these type of tokens on our character. If you remember what our character cards looked like, like they had little circles on them and so they might tell us to actually put those things on these circles and then later something might resolve based on where that circle is if it hasn't had been taken care of yet or not but we'll see how that works during the playthrough inside here are all our discovery tokens i have them inside the bag that this came with which is pretty cool now this again the bag is actually from the chest as well but and i actually put in the extra discovery tokens that were from that chest as well so we're playing with a lot of the new material which is going to be really cool and we're also playing a scenario from there now there's only one or two more things left to get ready the next thing we have to do is we have to create our event deck that's up here so the first thing we do is we're going to separate our decks of cards that we have this big deck of cards we're going to separate them by cards with books and cards with these adventuring symbols in them we're going to separate those so these have all those these have all the books so we're going to go ahead and first separate those then we're going to shuffle the decks and we're going to draw half of the number to equal out our scenario now our scenario is going to have 10 turns so we're going to go ahead and take five of these one two three four and five and then we're also going to take 10 10 of these cards as well. These are the ones with the adventuring symbols. So we're going to go ahead and take one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to take this deck and we're going to shuffle it up, and this becomes now our event deck that we're going to have to deal with over passage of time. Now, of course, the other thing we're going to have to do is we're going to, have to set the morale of the camp. It always starts at zero. Well, based on your scenario, maybe some will start at a different spot, but for this scenario, it is going to start at zero. Up here in the very corner of the board, we do have to put a marker for our weapon to see how powerful it is. It obviously can go from 1 to 10. It starts at 0, but I could spend a wood to go ahead and create this. I can build it using a build action to go ahead and create weaponry if I want to as one at a time. Now, we are also going to play as something else from the expansion. Our shelter here is right here. It's going to cost us some resources to build it based on the number of players. We have four, so we either pay four wood or three hide to create a shelter or improve either our canopy or our 
palisade here. That's what these are going to be able to do. And of course, these are going to protect us from weather and also can protect us from the evils that are lurking about on this island. Now, in the expansion, it does give you, or the, sorry, the promo kit, it does give you these awesome cards. Based on where we decide to put our shelter, we're going to be able to take advantage of what is on that tile. So let's say we did our, we built our shelter in the hut in the meadows. We're going to be able to roll an extra die during the production phase instead of the weather phase. So that means we'll know what kind of weather is coming. And we're going to go ahead and place this right here to occupy the new area so we have that. Now, of course, if we ever decide to change our location, we wouldn't be able to take advantage of this. We'd have to discard it unless you're going to the same location. So the first thing you have to do is you have to build your shelter. Once your shelter is built, you can place this on the board. Then again, you have to build an upgrade shelter action, which means you're going to have to go ahead and build an upgrade to it. So if, say we're in the mountains. Now we're in the mountains, we can build an upgrade and we can upgrade it to this. So that means every that we can go ahead and turn our perishable items into non-perishable food. So this is an interesting concept. We're going to see. We might not even use it because it is a whole action to do that, but maybe it would be worth it. We'll see as the playthrough goes on. The last thing we have to do is we have to do something that you only do in a four-player game, and that's the arrange camp action is a little bit different. Now, remember that Bible we had? It says that when a player doesn't arrange camp action, they get plus three determination and a health instead of just two. So normally when you do this action, you're going to get two determination and your morale is going to go up. Now, of course, the Bible is going to give you three determination and a health instead of just two. Now, the problem is with a four-player game, it's a little bit easier. So they make you put this card down on top of it, which basically symbolizes that if you do do a work around the camp action, you're only going to gain the two determination or you're going to boost the morale. You don't get to do both at the same time. Now, when you use the Bible, you get to go ahead and grab the three determination and heal yourself, but you don't get to add one morale to the camp. If you do the one morale, you're really not using the Bible at all. So we're going to go ahead and put that card there. And the only things we have left to do is we do have to put a couple tokens on these cards. You can only use these cards a total of two times, then they are gone. So our Bible and our pipe are both going to get those tokens. And there you have it. We have Robinson Crusoe all set up and ready to go. We're going to go time traveling for an antidote. I'm super excited for this. It's going to be really cool. I have never played this scenario before. It's going to be an absolute blast. Now, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so we'll see you know when the next video comes out. And it's, of course, going to be the playthrough of Robinson Crusoe. Also, please don't forget to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. Are you excited for the time travel scenario? Do you have another scenario that you really enjoy? I would love to hear your experiences on the island of Robinson Crusoe. Again, thank you so much for watching. And if you're excited to see if our gamer, cook, sailor, and carpenter can survive on the island and find that antidote, then... I need you to meet me at the table.